In today's note, what we're going to be looking at is the tangent ratio. So this is very similar to the sine and the cosine ratio that we covered in the last lesson, um, except it's just going to be a, a different set of given information. So the key thing that we're going to do, anytime we have a trig ratio or anything we're dealing with trig, we want to be able to label our sides. So I'm already given an angle here, or I'm going to use this as my reference angle. So again, this angle is the one that we're going to use to label our sides. The one side that we should always be able to label is always across from 90 degrees, and this is called the hypotenuse. So again, remember, it's always across from the 90 degree angle. Now, the other two sides, if we don't remember what they are, they're the opposite and the adjacent. They can change depending on what we look at, but we're going to use our reference angle to help us figure out what those sides are. So the side that is opposite of this angle is going to be called my opposite. And the side that is beside this angle, the only one that's left, is my adjacent. Now the opposite and adjacent can change depending on where your reference angle is. If my reference angle was up here at C, that would change what the opposite and adjacent are. So it's always you always want to use it off of the angle that you're given or that you're trying to find. Don't just always assume that the opposite is going here and the adjacent is going to here. So Again, like I said, the tangent ratio is very similar to the sine and cosine. The only difference is it's a different set of um, sides. So the tangent ratio is defined by the opposite over or divided by the adjacent. So tan A, or remember A represents an angle, is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So again, very similar to what we had done with the sine and cosine, just a different set of sides. So what we're going to do here is go through and basically the same idea as what we did last time, determine the measure of a side length um, in two different scenarios, and then determine the measure of an angle. So again, very, very similar to what we've done previously with sine and cosine, just a different set of information. So the first thing we want to do is determine the measure of angle X. I want to know what sides am I dealing with? Well, again, remember always across from 90 degrees is our hypotenuse. Across from the, so this angle here is given. So across from this angle is our opposite. And beside this angle is our adjacent. We want to use, always label our sides. The first now, or sorry, the second thing we have to do is figure out what ratio we have to use. Because this is the tan ratio note, we are going to be using tan, but if you're not quite sure, remember the acronyms we had SA, we had CA from sine and cosine. Now we have our last one, TOA. So tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. <clears throat> In this case, if I look at my triangle, I'm looking for the opposite side. I'm looking for... Oops, I'm looking for the opposite side, I'm looking for that x, and I'm given the adjacent side, or the 7, so the only two sides that I'm going to deal with are the opposite and adjacent. The only ratio that has opposite and adjacent is tan. So I'm going to start by writing out my formula, tan of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, and now I'm going to fill in my missing information. So tan a is the angle, so it becomes tan of 59, which equals my opposite, or x, divided by the adjacent, or 7. So now I filled in all my information. Now I need to solve for x. Remember we talked about when the missing piece is on the bottom, or sorry, the missing piece is on the top, or we'll say missing info, info on top, that means what we have to do, we have to bring it up, bring up, and multiply. So what that means this 7 comes up and we multiply. So this becomes 7 times tan 59, and we should know from our previous notes that tan of 59 entered on a calculator is just a number. 
which equals x. So I'm going to break it down one step further. I'm going to show what tan 59 is. You don't need to do this, but just for the in case you want to double check to make sure you get the right number, it should get rounded seven or 1.66. So seven times 1.66 will give me my answer for x, which is 11.65 rounded equals x. So this is my final answer. Again, remember if you want, or if you're using your calculator, remember um, your calculator, the calculator must be in degree mode. And again, if you're unsure, um, you should see at the top of your calculator, it should say either D or it should say DEG at the top of your calculator. Um, if you have trouble with that, um, you might have to Google it or you can send me a picture and I can try to help you um, over, over uh, email or over Microsoft Teams. But that's one example of how to find the side length. For example two, we're going to again try to find the side length or x. First thing I want to do is label my sides. Again, I know hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. I know that the so because I'm given this angle of 27, that's my reference angle. That's the angle I'm going to use. So that means opposite is across from that. And that means adjacent is beside this. So to figure out what ratio I need to use, well, again, I need to look at what sides I'm given. So based on this angle, I'm given 16 centimeters or my opposite, and I'm given x as my adjacent. Because x is what I'm looking for, I need to include this side. And because 16 is given information, I need to use this side. There's nothing for hypotenuse, so I don't need to worry about it. I can still label it, but I don't need to use it in my calculations. So I'm using the only trig ratio, if we go back up, that has opposite and adjacent. We look at the three at the top. The only one that has O and A is T or tan. So that means I should be using tan A or tan of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. With my formula now, I'm going to fill in the information that I know. My angle is 27, my opposite side is 16, and my adjacent side is unknown. So here we need to do another calculation to solve for x. And the trick here is when we have missing information, missing info on the bottom, so in this case the x is on the bottom, what we do is we switch and divide. So what I mean by switch is that these two things here switch and then we divide. So what I get next is I get x is now up top equals 16 divided by tan 27. So the tan 27 and the x have switched and now I'm dividing. I am going to do one more step in between to show you what tan 27 is just in case um, you get the wrong answer, but we should get 0.51 if I round. Again, you can skip this step right here if you're comfortable with your calculator and you know you can use it correctly using tans or trig ratios. But I get 16 divided by 0 0.051, or sorry, 16 divided by 0 0.51, and I get that x is equal to 31.51 we'll say 31.4 rounded. So that is what we get for our missing side. So again, these are the only two ways that you would have to solve for a missing side. Either the missing information is on top, so you bring the bottom up and multiply, or the missing information is on the bottom, so you switch these two and divide. And the same thing goes with sine and cosine. It's the same uh, two types of um, solving, again the multiplying or the dividing, 
Um, the only difference is, is that you're using a different trig ratio and you're using different sides. But it's all written basically the same way um, or it looks very uh, similar. So that's the nice thing about trig. The calculations aren't very difficult. It's more about figuring out which ratio to use. So example three, now we want to find a missing angle. So I want to find or the measure of angle A. In this case, angle A is right here where I've put the question mark. This is important because this is going to help me label my sides. So again, which that is always the first step. So across from 90 degrees is my hypotenuse. Across from my angle, in this case, I don't know what this angle is, but I'm still going to use it as my reference because I'm trying to solve for it. So across from this angle is my opposite. And then I have my adjacent, which is beside. Again, I'm going to try to figure out what information I'm given to figure out what ratio to use. So I'm given 9 kilometers, which is my opposite, 13 kilometers, which is my adjacent, so again, going back to that SOKOTOA as our acronym, the only ratio that has O and A is tan. So that means I must be using tan A equals opposite over adjacent. Now that I know what information to fill in, or what ratio I'm using, sorry, I can fill in my missing information. So I'm going to leave it as tan A because I don't know what my angle is but I know my opposite is 9, and I know that my adjacent is 13. What I can do now, now I have to solve for A. And the nice thing about solving for an angle, again, the, the steps are the exact same no matter what ratio you're doing. The only difference is the ratio itself. So if I want to get tan, get rid of tan or get A by itself, when the tan comes over, or basically I remove it and it becomes tan, negative 1 or the inverse of tan of 9 divided by 13. Right, remember it's not tan to the power of negative 1 on your calculator you should see if you do second function or shift or above the tan button you should see a tan negative 1 that's the button you have to hit so you have to do again second function and then tan to get that Again, I'm going to break it down into steps. You don't have to do the division first, but if you're comfortable on your calculator, you can. So you get 0 0.692. I'm going to leave a couple decimal places so I don't get a rounding error. And then I get, I want to do the inverse of tan of that, 0 0.692. I get an angle of, say, 34.7 degrees, or you could say 35 degrees, somewhere around there. So again, that's using the tan ratio to solve for a missing angle. And if you go back in your notes and you look at sine and cosine ratios for finding an angle, you'll see that it's very identical or very similar to um, this. The only difference here is just we're using tan instead of sine or cosine. So again, um, the key thing in this is just using a different ratio, in this case the tangent ratio. Um, the only difference between this and the sine and cosine ones are just your given different sides, specifically the opposite um, and the adjacent, or you're looking for the opposite or adjacent when given the other.